folks what's going on hope you're all having a good one me and old Saku boy here now are getting ready for another trip we're going in for five or six days uh, in central Newfoundland we're on the Beta Spear Highway it's kind of a remote section in the interior of the island it leads down to a couple communities on the south coast but where we're to now there's not much going on there's some cabins around and uh, but there's no cell service in this area so we're pretty tucked away and the plan is to go in with the two sleds I have here behind me uh, and we're going to go in and try to get into the Middle Ridge Wildlife Reserve and that's roughly, I don't know if it's probably 15-20 kilometers in over the country there's some big lakes and there's some barrens from there uh, I'd like to go beyond that to the Bay of North Wilderness area and that's around 40 kilometers in there roughly on a route that I kind of eyeballed out so there's a lot of question marks. I'm not really sure what the plan is. So I'm just going to go in, spend some time mucking around, uh, do some fishing, you know, have some meals, relax, test out this new sled system uh, I got going on here. And uh, yeah, uh, the Middle Ridge Wildlife Reserve has a population of woodland caribou. That's their own, the Middle Ridge herd. So we might see a few of them and God knows what else. So that's the plan, heading in. We're all packed up, ready to go, and uh, glad to have you along for the ride. Got uh, skis, ski poles, got my dry pack there, all loaded down with gear, food bag. I also got a little shovel here, just in case. That's the canvas tent in here. Got my inReach, SOS two-way communicator device. There's no service down here where I'm at now. Uh, got my topographic map for the area. Sleeping pad. Got the wood stove and some ice fishing sticks and uh, frying pan and stuff in there as well. Got my ski boots. A pair of snowshoes. Although there's not a whole lot of you know fluffy snow down. It's all pretty hard packed. And I got a water bottle with my auger. And last but not least, up here is my pack. So I got a few items in there, not a whole lot, not much weight to it at all. Main reason why I got that is because I got two carabiners hooked up on the back of it. So this is my little uh, ski polk system, or sled polk, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I used it last night, I had PVC pipe and I had a 10 foot piece of PVC pipe I cut it in half I cut two new holes here for rope it was around 6 foot of rope slid it through both pipes tied some loops at the end couple bowlings and I got the carabiners there hooked into the pack into the waist belt I got a couple uh, just overhand knots here. So those overhand knots prevent this from slipping out. And I got some electric tape here just holding together uh, the two PVC pipes with the rope in the middle inside of it. And this X makes it a bit stronger, gives it more support. And the whole idea is that of this setup uh, is for me to pull the sled and it's not going to come up behind me when I get on, uh, on downhill sections. And I've never tried it before so this is a good test. And that's the setup. Going to leave the truck right here and uh, i got to pull the side. Perfect. the move and that's 
where we're headed. Right across this lake. That's the first objective here this afternoon. And it's blowing up a bit of a storm out there. So we're gonna plug along. We're doing all right. Saku's all geared up. Got some winter duds on. It's a crisp one. Boy, let's go a sec. Right now it's minus 16. That's not counting the wind chill. I'd say with the wind chill it's close on minus 25, minus 30. Whoa! She's storming out on the lake, on the open sections. <laughs> Pretty crazy. We're just here now uh, in the lee by a little island. So nice and sheltered. Taking a break. Uh, we're just about across the first lake. We've been going for about an hour and 15 minutes. We didn't leave till 2, 2 p.m. It's just after 3. So I'm only going to go today till maybe 4.35 and then that will be about an hour and a half or so before dark and we'll set up camp. I have, a, I have the canvas tent with me with the wood stove but I'm not going to have enough time this evening to set that up. So we're going to sleep by the fire with the tent, the door opened up and uh, that will get us through night one I believe. So a bit of trekking left to go, I'm not sure how far. We'll get today, but uh, I'm just out here winging it and having a time, so things are going well. this is. Nothing better than battling the elements. Fogging along. Oh man. This is when I feel alive. Every little bone in my body. Every nerve. So the next lake is straight ahead out there and that's Great Gold Lake. Not sure if we're going to try to cross that one this evening or not. Uh, as I said, it's coming up on 4 o'clock now. That's a big lake. I'd almost prefer setting camp up and, uh, and heading across it tomorrow. We'll see when we get down there. Okay, so we're pulling in to make camp. Uh, 
We went for around two and a half hours. We're on the second big lake here. And I guess I had enough time to go to the far end of it, but it's real windy down there and it doesn't look like there's a whole lot of shelter. So I found a nice spot here behind behind me and uh, we're gonna put the tent up there for the night. So time to get to work. So camp's up, I got a bit of wood cut, lots more left though, uh, the fire's going, Saku's all in there tucked away in a tent, nice and cozy. Uh, now I gotta go out and drill a hole so I can get some water that I can put in with his food uh, for supper, and also I'll have a hot drink later on tonight to warm me up before bed. So what an evening out here, it is awesome. Look at that sunset, beautiful. We're quite a ways inland now, in the interior of Newfoundland, so it's a fair bit colder than it is, say, out by Grand Falls, closer to the ocean uh, where I am. So there's a lot of ice. I'd say there's near two feet of ice, just saying, thick stuff. Nice and cozy now, all tucked away. What do you think, Zach? Hey, thank you. Soon gonna be supper time, hey? Soon gonna be time for supper, bud? Yeah? That's Saku's pot on the fire there now. Just warming up. So I use my Garmin InReach Explorer. Uh, it's the plus version. And that helped me get in here this afternoon. As you can tell where the black arrow is is where we started and the blue arrow shows where we are right now. So we're on Great Gull Lake. We we have came about 6.7 kilometers but uh, it wasn't in a straight line so I'll round that up to about 7. Not bad in a little over two hours. So uh, I help uh, I use this to help guide me in where it was so windy and white out on the, on the first lake and uh, I also followed some skidoo tracks anyways that's gone out now the light dimmed off on it so it's nice to kick back but man it was pretty neat coming in today wind, wind was howling and uh, a couple times I could barely see uh, the shoreline 
and the first leak but we took our time and like I said there was a few skidoo tracks so we picked our way in and uh, and then I found this little cove which shelters us from the northwest wind as is out there now whipping away old Saxter kicked back he's pretty tired now too <laughs> he'll be out for the night once I feed him that's it KO'd yeah, anyways, it's probably minus 16, minus 17 now, uh, but believe it or not, I am content and cozy. The fire deer in front of us, only probably five feet away from the tent, and uh, we're getting a bit of heat from that, and I got me my wool gear on rated for it's it's the thickest wool gear you can get smart wool merino wool is what it is uh, this will suffice for tonight my sleeping bag is rated at a comfort level of minus 17 so uh, right on the limit there but as I said I got all the gear I'll bundle up I'll have Saku I'll bundle up and uh, It'll be a good night. But I'm gonna crack a beer now. I brought two beers in with me. And uh, that's it because you know, they're gonna be frozen solid come tomorrow. If I would've kept them overnight, as it was, I just had to warm them up by the fire. But it's nice to have a couple and I got a few nips of rum for later on in the week. Go on, Zach. So that's nice and warm on his belly. It's almost like a bowl of oatmeal now. <laughs> Warmed up kibble. So, Saku's having his supper, and I'm probably just gonna have some pasta that I got there with some tuna mixed in, or maybe a freeze dried meal. Because. I got some better eats with me, but I'm going to save them for later in the week when we got more time. This evening was a bit of a rush. And especially, I'm going to get the canvas tent set up for at least a couple nights and we'll be able to relax and eat in a more organized manner once we get in that guy. So, Zach is all done. Time for me to get mine. Zach, how long did that take you? Five seconds, six seconds, you're a savage. <laughs> He's like a vacuum bike. Just inhales it. Anyways, he's a hungry boy. He's a hungry boy. Look at that fire. Gorgeous. Look at this. Some heat coming off that now, I'll tell you. You can feel it up in the top of the tent here. Top of the tent traps the heat. And we get a little bit in here with us. You can't beat it. Woohoo! Bit of chili. It ain't homemade chili, but it's it's, it's pretty friggin' good. Cheers, boys. Good morning. The boys made it through the night. Lovely morning now, just past 7 a.m. Sun's out already. Kettle's on. How you doing, Sack? Sack slept well, as did I. We were cuddled up for a while there. Don't we, bud? I don't know what the plan is today. Once I have a coffee uh, and a bite to eat, and I feed Saku, I'll make a decision then. We're gonna push further. 
into this central wilderness here. Uh, I'd like to maybe set up the canvas tent tonight. Not that last night was cold or we had a bad sleep or nothing like that. As I said, it was it was great. But I'd like to have the comfort of that canvas tent set up. We can use it as a base camp. Then for the rest of the week, I can continue on a little further if I want. Explore. Uh, I can stay in the cold tent for a night or two. And then I can always come back to the canvas tent uh, with the wood stove if things need to be dried out. Or we just want to have a real cozy night in the warmth of that tent because... It's, it's a luxury. Not that it was a bad night last night. Like I said, you know, we slept well. So, that's the plan. It's beautiful out now. Sun's breaking through the clouds there as it comes up over the horizon. Wind's still gusting, but uh, all in all, it's a nice morning. So that's where we're headed today, straight past those islands and uh, to the other side of Great Gull Lake. As you can see it's nice and barren over there. What do you think Saku? Hey Sack, what do you think bud? We'll get going now hey? Saku's still starving, he's always starving, don't matter he can eat and eat and eat. He's a garbage bin. <laughs> Anyways, it's a cold, crisp morning, but it's uh, it's fine. It's a fine day here in Newfoundland. Here's camp. Won't take me too long now to get all that down. I'd say within 30 minutes or so we'll be packed up ready to go. So basically last night, uh, you know the wind was howling, so when I set the tent up, I set it up so that the northwest wind sweeps across the front of the tent and uh, all the fire smoke will come this way or back the other way but it's not going to come in the tent at us and it didn't last night uh, if I would have put the door of the tent over here we would have got a bit of an eddy effect basically the wind would have came over the top of the tent and swirled the smoke back into the entrance and we would have been smoked out so important to keep in mind uh, if you ever want to do a setup like this uh, or if you make a lean-to you want the entrance of your shelter uh, to be parallel with the way the wind's blowing. So last night the wind was sweeping by here, as I said, straight across the front. Now I've had this tent for a while. Uh, you know, she's been through a lot. The Newfoundland trip, the Labrador trip. So I don't mind uh, putting her through the paces. And if you're going to put a tent somewhat close to the fire you just got to keep an eye on things you don't want to go to sleep with a roaring fire uh, but if you can keep it four or five feet away it's all good but expect a few of these guys a few burn holes you know like right here so expect that that's no big deal to me anyways it's a personal preference and to me I don't really care hey Zach. So when I came into this campsite yesterday evening, uh, I had to unload some of the sled. It's a bit of a tight squeeze, the trail's not very big. Uh, so I'm gonna bring it out the same way. I got some things left on, but the back sled is empty. This Polk sled system that I uh, made up at the house a couple nights ago, held up great yesterday and uh, I'm pretty pleased. The sled never came up behind me like it normally does because in the past all I've ever used was just a rope 
And if I was on any sort of downhill, the sled would be coming up behind me, almost taking the feet out from underneath me. But uh, that's not happening no more. So we're just about packed up, ready to go. That's where the tent was last night. And it is hard as a rock right now. That's just from us lying on us. And I guess a bit of heat from our bodies. But if you step anywhere out here, like I was, I had to go get wood yesterday evening and I had to put snowshoes on. If not, I was going up to my waist nearly. Uh, and right now, if I walked out with a boot, the same thing would happen. But over here, it is solid. Uh, that's our big fire pit. It's just about burned out. So last night in the tent, underneath us was this sleeping pad, the thermo rest. So there's a bit of a reflective barrier here to reflect some heat back. And there's some grooves which trap heat. And underneath us, I also had this Heli Hansen suit, which I plan to wear if I take a couple days off and do some ice fishing and I'm more stationary on the lakes and ponds. Um, this was underneath us last night and that provided some great insulation along with the mat and I had the sleeping bag for myself and Saku was wrapped up in the coat for that kit. and. Uh, he also had a blanket around him too, and his little jacket he has on right now. So still on Great Gull Lake here, about two kilometers into our day, and I stumbled upon an island. I was actually considering camping on this island last night because it provided some good shelter, but uh, I stayed in that little cove instead. But on the island, uh, there looks like uh, there's an old abandoned cabin. Probably an old hunting or fish shack. Sack you out of there, bud. Let's go, come on. Out, out, hey! Come here. Sack you. Sack, come here. Good boy. Of course, uh, there's a mess left here. Booze, bottles, and everything else. Looks like it's been a long time since this thing's been in use. Out. Anyways, I'm glad I didn't come over here last night because Saki would have been into that. I would have had to tie him on because he would have kept coming back. Being all curious, you know. So we're going to continue onward. Uh, I think I do want to set the canvas tent up tonight. I know at the back end, a great goal, there's a bunch of islands that look forested. So I could put it there, or I could keep going. Uh, Middle Ridge Wildlife Reserve is around 17 kilometers from here roughly. I don't think I'll make it there today. I'm not sure what the going's like. It's wide open country, I can tell, but I don't know if I'm gonna push that far. Just kind of exploring around, getting a feel for the area. I think I'd like to get a base camp set up. That's what I'm feeling. And if I decide to set the canvas tent up, we're going to have to stop at least three hours before it gets dark because it's going to take me that long to set it up. So come along and uh, 
we'll see where the wind takes us. Beautiful day though, it's a dandy. The sun is beaming. Beautiful in here, wide open, right? Real cool landscape. Your sweater or what? It's not gonna come off that easy. 